Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. Today we are going to talk about how to handle complex numbers in ComSol Multiphysics. Many times we come across solution, come across a solution where the solution gives a complex number. For example, we have taken electromagnetic wave equation. In electromagnetic wave equation, if you see the equation, there is a dielectric permittivity or relative dielectric permittivity in the differential equation. So relative dielectric permittivity is a complex number and there are significances for its real and complex real and imaginary values. I will be, be coming to that in a, uh, in a short while. But before that, I would like to tell when we solve a differential equation that involves complex parameters that gives rise to a complex solution and when we plot it in ComSol, basically we don't get any complex number. So what is the fallacy in, in uh, behind that we will be exploring today in this particular video. So I have also taken another example where we are solving wave equation that is pressure acoustic. So this is a simple pressure acoustic solution where a Gaussian explosion has been solved and this file has been taken from ComSol application library itself. So in this case if you look at the pressure acoustic equation it involves a parameter which is C that is basically the wave speed but the wave speed is a scalar number and that's why in this particular case the solution could be a real valued function but many times when you come across pressure acoustics there should be associated phases with pressure and when you solve pressure with the phase information that gives rise to complex numbers so the thing I want to convey is many times in pressure acoustics or optics you come across complex solutions and then for the analyzing of the data or the post processing of the results we need to know how exactly we will be using the different complex values and how exactly the operations that means there is a popular dot product in complex variables so in, in today's video I will be talking about that dot product in particular so going ahead with the optical solution that means in this particular case we have taken optical scattering of a nanosphere again from the application library I will be just briefing about this particular simulation so this particular way this particular equation we are solving as you see in the setting window of ComSol multiphysics there is a domain so the smallest sphere is the nanoparticle and the outer layer represents the PML that means perfectly matched layer and in between we have a aerial space where there is air. So this is the solution this is the modeling scenario and if we if we if we go here you can see uh, the PML at this particular domain and this is the far field solution. What is far field solution I have already talked about it in a previous video I will be putting the link in the description box so you, so you can have a cross reference. So now we go to the solution it, that was a parametric solution because they have solved for different wavelengths so the idea was they took a nanoparticle they did a simulation where they come across the optical scattering from the nanosphere so a light is being incident on the nanoparticle and whatever light is getting scattered they have solved for it and they just wanted to know at which wavelength the scattering was maximum or how exactly the characteristics look for different wavelengths and that's why a parametric solution was taken. So ultimately after the solution they plotted electric field absorption and different dependent variables with respect to the wavelength or in a three dimensional space like in this particular case 3D a 3D plot has been taken and I have changed this plot to a complex valued like uh, they are solving for electric field and electric it is in Cartesian coordinate so it has three directions EX, EY and EZ so if we just plot EX so I write EX which represents the electric field uh, scalar value in the x direction so I click on plot so you can see this is the electric field distribution on the nanoparticle now when we plot EX as I have already mentioned 
so this is basically a complex number but still we are not getting a complex number here if, if, if you if you click anywhere on the sphere you can see it is giving a real value like here it is 0 0.1109 or something so in by default in console if you plot ex it will give you the real value of the of that particular variable but if you just specify like if i write real r e real ex then again it is giving the same value because it is a real number but if i plot imaginary if you look at the uh, colored bar it was from minus 0 0.15 to 0 0.15 now i am changing it to imaginary of ex so it should change if it is a complex number otherwise it would give rise to zero because for a real value there is no imaginary part but when i write image ex so you can see the color bar has changed so this ex has a real part and an imaginary part now when uh, you have two different variables or two different complex numbers and you want to do a dot product or you want to take an absolute value of that particular complex number then you need to use some operations so that i will be talking about uh, before that i would like to talk something about the dialectic permittivity why it is a complex number and why that particular differential equation is giving rise to a complex solution so uh, briefly uh, dialectic permittivity represents polarizability of the material now what is a polarizability what is polarizability so if we apply an external electric field in a dielectric medium then what happens there are molecules which are initially randomly placed inside the material like the they have shown in this particular diagram the diagram is taken from wikipedia if you search permittivity you will be going to a page of wikipedia where this image can be found so randomly oriented molecules does not give rise to any surface charges because they mutually they mutually nullify the charges and that's why we don't get any resultant charges on the surface but what happens when we apply an external field due to the external field those molecules reorient themselves and a little charge separation happens inside each molecule and that charge separation happens due to reorientation of the electron cloud uh, under the influence of the external electric field so as it is mentioned here so under the influence of this field which is given by this red positive and negative symbols this molecules has been reoriented you can see under this applied field all the negative charges are pointing towards the surface and it gives rise to a negative surface charge over the surface of the material now what does the real part signify so this polarizability strength if you have a material you apply an electric field it is if it is readily getting reoriented then it's a good polarizable material and the real part signifies that if, 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 if it has a higher real part that means it is more polarizable now the imaginary part signifies the loss of, of the system that means when the molecules reorient there might be some sluggishness in reorient, reorienting the material or the molecule it depends on the material to material and that is why the imaginary part varies from one material to another material in a simple term we can say there is a kind of opposition force which is acting during the process of reorientation under the influence of the external electric field which is a loss and that is represented by the imaginary part so moving forward with the complex analysis so here i have taken an example of two complex numbers which is ex and ey so ex has a real part plus i into imaginary part similarly ey has a real part plus i into imaginary part now in many cases when we do analysis of say complex pressure or complex optics we need to do a dot product between two complex numbers which is ex dot ey it is represented by this modulus of ex dot ey so in comsol that particular operation is given by this operator which is called real dot so what does real dot do for two different complex numbers that i have to, i have shown here 
so ex dot ey means real ex into real ey plus imaginary ex into imaginary ey so if you have both the complex numbers similar that means ex and ex then you can replace this ex uh, sorry you, you can replace this ey by ex then you will be getting a dot product between ex and ex which will be equal, again equal to real of ex multiplied by real of ex plus imaginary of ex multiplied by imaginary of ex that is nothing but real ex whole square plus imaginary ex whole square so i'll be going to the console interface and uh, i'll show you how exactly i can do this real dot operation and this operation is important i'll be coming ahead with another video where i'll be talking about optimization of a pressure acoustics and in that case this absolute value or this dot product will be useful so before that i just want to show you if i write real dot of say ex comma ey it will be giving that particular dot product so uh, it has this particular electric field has ex ey and ez so we can also do a dot product between any of the components suppose ex and ez so if you write that then it will be giving if you just look at the bar whenever i am changing the variables there should be a change in the values in the color bar so today i am i am stopping here this particular operation or real dot operation is useful i'll be coming ahead with next uh, with upcoming examples where i'll be using all those operations uh, before i end the video i'd like to say that we are providing services where we do uh, where we assist you uh, to develop your research problem be it a console functions console modeling or a cat drawing if you have some requirement you can write us in the given email id and i'll be will be responding you back thank you